Hello, hello, and welcome to the beginning of a chaotic personal journey into learning to create art again, to fall back in love with something that used to take up such a large part of my life, but that I have not had the time or the effort or the energy to do in the past few years due to a wide variety of things, not limited to the pandemic and my own personal mental health issues before that. But I'm hoping to become the artist that I want to be. And so I'm starting by going through all the art supplies that I have. And today, kicking off Inktober, I'm going through all the ink in this tub drawer in the study slash craft slash junk room where everything gets dumped, as you do. This here is the Kazercraft mist sprays, which are good for backgrounds and mixed media, but I haven't used them in forever, so they may have many more uses that I'm unaware of. I also don't have good paper to swatch on, or even to use at all really, so that's another thing that I am going to improve on with time. However, all these sprays are really, really gorgeous. I have a lavender iridescent, turquoise iridescent, lime, white, rose gold, brown iridescent, and a gold shimmer. They bleed through this paper like crazy, as would be obvious, uh, but I'm using a little plastic slip uh, that some bathers came in between the pages so they don't leak onto the next page. As you can see, they're very reflective, very shimmery. I definitely think I would recommend them. Next are a lot of inks from a brand called Couture Creation, starting with their alcohol ink Glitter Accents. I adore glitter, so I have a lot of different glittery things, glittery inks and the like. Uh, I did notice, however, later that I didn't show, I'd packed everything away, but even when dry, if you rub your finger over the glitter, and this is for a lot of them, uh, the glitter will lift, and that is something to be mindful of. I'm hoping to figure out how to uh, keep the glitter on, some sort of fixative or something, because I don't want to lose all that glitter, obviously. Uh, next are the Alcohol Ink Fluoros, which has a really dense fluoro mix with a strange texture in the middle, and then it fades out to something really similar, like the regular alcohol ink that I think you can see there. Uh, next is the Pearl in the color Raincoat, which has a much softer shimmer compared to the glitter ink. And lastly, we have the Metal Alloy in Rose Gold, which might be my favorite on this page. Um, they're all gorgeous, but like I said, the glitter and the shimmer lift when dry, so that is an issue. Uh, like the sprays, they bleed through the paper like crazy, but that is to be expected, I think, with inks. Um, and, oh, here is my brother just popping in to show you that we are indeed Australian. He snagged a box of Vegemite dip packets from work and wanted to show them off to you. Back to the swatching. These liquid drop 3D pearls are not ink, but they were in the tub, so they are getting swatched with everything else. Uh, I am don't remember buying them. I'm not quite sure what they actually are. Uh, that means that they are potentially my mother's. Um, but they're kind of fun. The only issue is that the pink has indeed started to dry out, um, which made it a bit hard to swatch, but it is still usable. Uh, and they leave a really cool shine and kind of texture um, and a 3D effect that is really cool to work with. Um, oh, and this ink I know for sure is my mom's, um, from when she was really into craft making, meaning this ink is around 15 to 16 years old. Uh, the brand Stamp It Up does a lot of the card making stuff, um, but this is such a beautiful color and despite its age, it's still a really good ink. I also have this beautiful glass dip pen. I have not used it yet, as it is a recent purchase, something I brought since I've been trying to kickstart my art again, but before I decided to document the journey. And it was only $10, so 
a definite bonus. This Art Spectrum ink is apparently sepia, but it is definitely not what I would call a sepia colour. I'm sure that when I brought it, it was brown. So I don't know if something happened to the ink while it was just sitting there, like not being used. Um, it's definitely been a good few years since I brought it and I haven't really used it. But it is far more a charcoal grey, which is a cool colour, but not sepia. And that is indeed something to keep in mind if this is something you're planning on buying. Next I have this Rit dye in cherry red. I know that dyes aren't ink, but I liked the colour a lot and I thought I could do background washes with it. It comes up real nice on paper and I don't think it has faded unlike the previous ink, so I'm excited to use it. I also have this Speedball ink and I had to show you how absolutely difficult it was to get this seal off. I've also had this a really long time and never opened it, which uh, tells you a lot about me, but also about how buying art supplies and using art supplies are indeed two separate ho uh, hobbies. But of all the inks that I swatched today, I think this one is my favourite. It is such a rich, real black and I think it will be so versatile and I can't wait to actually use it. I'm also in awe of how much ink dip pens hold. All of that scribble was done with one dip. And there you can see the raised wet look texture of those pearl drops. They're totally dry. Now there's a lot of bleed through, but that is to be expected. Now I have a lot, a lot of ink from the paper mill. Uh, and I have used these ones quite a bit uh, when I first got them. So they were really crusty when I opened them. So I had to cut down how hard it was to open them. Um, all in all, it took me three hours to swatch everything. So I think it's pretty cool that I managed to cut it down to such a short video. Um, I've used the regular alcohol ink, which is fantastic, I think. And some of the shimmer alcohol ink, which is lovely too. Unfortunately, as you see, I'm really bad at buying stuff and never using it. Uh, so there are a few things that I just opened for the first time there. Now, one of them had quite a clogged top, uh, despite never being used, or maybe because it's never been used. But I did manage to get it going. And it is really, really beautiful. They all are. Again, these lift... Um, when dry, that shimmer lifts when dry. Nowhere near as bad as the Couture Creations. Um, but they're all such really rich, nice colours. Uh, I'm sure they'd look much better on better paper. But I definitely do recommend the Paper Mill Alcohol Ink. I don't know how good quality they are in terms of light fastness. Uh, but I just really want to create art. And I'm not worried about... Uh, professionality right now. This is still some more paper mill ink but it is their metallic range. Um, these The shimmer on them also lifts when dry but they are absolutely beautiful. Uh, I brought a lot of these and a lot of them I was just opening for the first time so I'm kind of lucky that they do look so good still. Um, but I think on this page, my favorite might be the out of out of space, which is that gray in the top corner, and the penny loafer, which is that rusty red. Uh, I will write the names down for a second, and I hope you get a good look at them. I'm still working out how to edit things to not take up too much of your time, but to also keep everything cohesive. So I'm really just messing around with this sand space down the bottom. There is also a gorgeous one. I definitely recommend this set. They have such a pretty shine that the camera is surprisingly picking up well. I was quite worried about that, but it has worked out for me. Um, next up, I am showing off a calligraphy set that I have also had for years. It's from Kmart, so it is nothing special. It has barely been used because I do not know how to use calligraphy, and I know the only way to improve is to do more. And upon reading the instructions, I 
it reads, don't let these sit uh, for more than six months, which I definitely have. It's probably been two years or so. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit chunky in there. It took a while to get it flowing, but it did eventually. I was too nervous, though, to set up any of the others and actually probably swatch it out. I would like to. Uh, I will loop back around to that eventually, I hope. Uh, but if that is something you would be interested in seeing, like this set properly tested out, then I am indeed capable of that. Just let me know down below. Um, but they are very, that red is very pretty. I also have this Jane Davenport fountain pen, which I adored when it had ink in it. It is the mermaid pen, um, but the ink got used up and I don't know how to open it to put more ink in. And I have thrown away the instructions, so I don't know how to put the canisters in. Uh, so that is also something I'm going to have to figure out. And this here is a Montmartre calligraphy set, which comes with a nice wooden handle and lots of different nibs that you can interchange. Uh, but I have not tested them out yet. I've just opened them from the packet and I'm putting them in an old honey tester jar to keep it all together. It is another thing to figure out. Uh, now, these were a online purchase during COVID. It's an ink set from the brand called Freedom of the Starry Sky, which comes with a dip pen, uh, which this rubber protector has absolutely gone the way of rubbish. It is all yellow and gross. Uh, but that dip pen is gorgeous. You could see how sparkly it was with the shimmer and the twirl. Um, but these inks also carry a bit of shimmer in them. Um, but they are a very, very thin ink. Uh, so they are quite watery when you're scribbling with them. Uh, but I am, I am glad to have these. I know I need to use these more. I know I will love them if I use them more. I am not too sure how much I would recommend them because I don't know how available these are anymore. I have not seen any ads for them in years and I struggled to find out much online. I did find some other reviews online, but I couldn't exactly find where to purchase them. Um, but I am glad to have these. Again, I am shocked at how much ink the dip pens hold that whole pinky red ribbon was just from one dip and now I'm using the stopper as a stamp they all have these really good stoppers in them to uh, sort of keep everything nice and secure stop anything from leaking which is really good and a really good way to keep and store these things but it can lead to a little bit of like an explosion when you open them uh, just sort of they like burst out uh, the liquid. Um, if I was using these in an actual art piece and not just swatching uh, in the messiest possible way, I would definitely open these inks far, far away uh, because as you can see there, that one just went plop and <laughs> leaked all over the page. Um, but I'm just swatching everything here on not great paper just to test that everything works. So a bit of mess is not a problem. I would definitely try to use these more and particularly the dip pens. I think they are so clever. Um, but yes, yeah, so much ink went all over my fingers due to how these open. I'm sure there must be a better way. But I... <laughs> like to store these to keep the stoppers nice and protected um, without them like exploding when you open it and wasting some ink. Uh, but as it is, these are really fun, really nice. Um, and there's surprisingly not a lot of leak through except the big drops, but the line work, not so much. Now this was another set that I brought at the same time from the same um, online shop, but they all have CX made on it, so I don't know if it's a different brand or what. Um, but they are like a neon light up set under blue light. 
Now this one, the dip pen protector, is still like a nice clear plastic. Um, but these stoppers, they have much more of an explosion when you open it. I don't know whether it's like the chemical makeup. It might just make it a bit more plot. But as you saw, some ink that got on my fingers got on that beautiful dip pen. It's a different style of dip pen from the other one, which is really cool. I might even take the pens out of there so I can just have all my dip pens like on display. Um, but this definitely led itself to a much, much messier uh, go of swatching things. Uh, but that just makes it more fun, I think. Um, no, these, these are a lot of fun. And they're actually a surprisingly lovely, uh, almost pastel set of colors, which I don't think is very typical uh, for colors that light up in blue light. I feel like they tend to be more neon, where these have... A, like a lighter almost pastel-y hue there obviously are some brights like that yellow is quite bright but yeah there's a a dullness to them but in a good way that makes it kind of shocking when the blue light does hit them and they light up of course unfortunately two of them don't really light up under blue light and that is the blue and the purple um, and I am unsure if they always did that or if that is something that has happened over time due to uh, ill use or non-use, I should say. And they've just sort of like faded. Um, this one here is my favorite one. It is the clear one uh, that... I think will be such a good like hint to things so you can kind of just put over and just sort of like swatch itself out. Um, here is my other brother um, <laughs> showing his corn relish and dip. I still live at home uh, with my parents and adult siblings and my mom's brother so I'm just sort of filming and both my brothers had the same thought independently, which is, I am going to bother my sister. This, I told you, took over three hours to film. Uh, so they came to this conclusion separately. Neither was home when the other one was. Um, but yeah, they both thought that was funny. <laughs> uh, but as you saw, they lit up. Those um, CX made pens lit up really well under the blue light. And this here is my final thing to show you, which is the Sumi Ink sketch set by the Paper Mill. And again, I've never used it because I am too stressed to try things, even though I buy them. It is gorgeous, um, and I definitely want to, so if that is something you want to see me test, let me know, and I will record it for you. Now, that's pretty much it for the video. I'm thrilled to have most of these and I'm keen to create some art again. A few items I'll have to practice with to improve myself, which is challenging and exciting, but an adventure awaits, you know? In any case, I do hope you enjoyed this video and maybe learnt something. And if I'm lucky, I will see you in the next one as I continue my journey into this crazy, crazy, chaotic mess that I am making for myself. Thank you so much for watching.